Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen. Vertical VX4 prototype passes phase one of crude test. More info on drone operator finds. And Hart Aerospace unveils 30-seat hybrid electric demonstrator. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Vertical VX4 prototype passes phase one of crude test. Vertical Aerospace recently completed phase one testing of its VX4 prototype. They are now working with the UK Civil Aviation Authority to start untethered tests. The vertical VX4 features a 20% power-to-weight ratio increase from the previous model, allowing it to reach cruise speeds of 150 miles per hour. It is a crewed electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that can carry up to four passengers with zero emissions. Phase 1 testing included multiple pilot tethered flights and ground runs for a total of 20 sorties at the Vertical Flight Test Center. These included ground vibration testing, propeller spinning and balancing, parts checks, and a high-voltage ripple test. The company also analyzed the aircraft's performance in run-up, taxi, tethered flight, and electric propulsion unit failure to ensure safety outside its normal operation range. Vertical engineers collected and measured system parameters to verify that all systems were working correctly. Vertical is continuing discussions with the UK CAA to prepare for Phase 2 testing. This will involve crewed VTOL and low-speed maneuver operations in thrust-borne flight. Then, if successful, they will move into Phase 3 to test wingborne lift. Phase 4 will evaluate the shift from thrust-borne to wingborne flight and back. After the break, private Bristol aircraft mistaken for a drone shot at near Murmansk, Russia. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com The legendary BD4C program is building an exciting future for those who want a rugged four-seat family flyer with a proven history. The SureWings program produces a complete kit and builder assist program that gives you everything you need to be flying a BD4CS in record time. For conventional kit builders, BD Aviation has parts, partial kits, and full kits for the 190 mile per hour BD4C that has logged thousands of hours. Visit SureWings.com and BDAviation.com for more details. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. Private Bristol aircraft mistaken for a drone and shot at near Murmansk, Russia. One of two private aircraft that launched from Apatiti Airport near Murmansk in the Russian Federation with filed flight plans to Arkhangelsk was apparently mistaken for a drone and fired upon on September 11th. Two light sport aircraft had filed flight plans from an airfield near Apatiti, a Czech ATAC 321 Feta NG, and a BRM Aero Bristol NG5. About five minutes after they took off, the pilot of the ATAC Feta sent a mayday call. The pilot of the Bristol reported that they had taken small arms fire. FSA 2025 Flight Sim Expo in Rhode Island in June. The Flight Simulation Association announced that its 2025 Flight Sim Expo will be held at the Rhode Island Convention Center June 27-29, 2025, and registration for the event will open December 14, 2024. The event will begin with new product introductions and seminars on Friday morning, and product updates and announcements from some of the top simulator developers in the afternoon. They will be tempting guests with some of the new hardware and software to try out over the weekend. 
NASA Kennedy takes multi-mission hardware delivery. In a span of two days, NASA's Kennedy Space Center took deliveries of essential hardware for three upcoming Artemis missions. On September 3, 2024, the European Service Module for NASA's Artemis III mission arrived at Port Canaveral, Florida. This module, transported aboard the Canopy cargo ship, was built by Airbus and 10 European and U.S. contributors. It's a crucial piece of NASA's Orion spacecraft, providing propulsion, thermal control, electrical power, water, and oxygen for the crew. Joby applies for Air Operator Certification in UAE JB Aviation announced it has applied to the United Arab Emirates for certification to become its first electric air taxi operation. Joby has already signed an agreement with Dubai's Road and Transport Authority to begin air taxi services in the Emirate of Dubai. The company has also signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Abu Dhabi's Department of Municipalities and Transport, Department of Economic Development, and its Department of Culture and Tourism to establish and expand electric air taxi services in Abu Dhabi and beyond. That was our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. More info on drone operator finds. Last month, we described how the FAA sent notices of violations to 27 operators of UAS, along with proposed fines totaling more than $341,000. The largest fine was $32,700 for an operator whose drone caused a Wesley Chapel, Florida Sheriff's Office helicopter pilot to terminate a nighttime search for a burglary suspect to avoid a mid-air collision. A fine of $18,000 was issued to an operator for intentionally flying a drone without approval inside a temporary flight restriction near the Miami Grand Prix race. The pilot also lacked authorization to fly within Class D airspace near an airport, had no Part 107 remote pilot certificate, and operated beyond visual line of sight. Two operators were fined $16,000 and $4,000 for flying near SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. Again, they flew inside the stadium TFR, lacked airspace authorization to fly near the airport, and without Part 107 pilot certifications. Another pilot without a Part 107 certificate earned a fine of $7,760 for flying an unregistered drone inside Paul Brown Stadium over spectators and violating the TFR without airspace authorization and BB loss. Another pilot without a certificate was fined $5,000 for creating a collision hazard by flying a drone so close to a helicopter that the downwash forced the drone to the ground. After these messages, Hart Aerospace unveils 30-seat hybrid electric demonstrator. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Hart Aerospace unveils 30-seat hybrid electric demonstrator. Hart Aerospace, a Swedish aircraft manufacturer, unveiled the first full-scale demonstrator of its ES-30 model on September 12th. The hybrid electric airplane is a part of the company's work towards making air travel more sustainable. The ES-30 is a hybrid electric airplane meant to support a standard 30-passenger capacity. It's intended for short-haul regional flights with an electric range of 200 kilometers and an extended hybrid range of up to 400 kilometers. 
Its first scale demonstrator, dubbed Hart Experimental 1, or X1, was primarily built in Hart's Gothenburg facilities. It will be used for ground-based testing with a spotlight on charging, taxiing, and turnaround operations. Hart will also run hardware tests on and off the aircraft to oversee the performance of its critical systems before it leaves the ground. The Hart X-1 is slated to take its first fully electric flight in the second quarter of 2025. Moving forward, Hart Aerospace will shift its focus to perfecting the ES-30 manufacturing process and building a pre-production prototype. This version, the Hart X-2, is intended to, quote, mature the design and production methods, end quote, of the ES-30 based on data from X-1 tests. It's scheduled for flight in 2026. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.